What up, what up? Matty B here on another episode of AST. I got my buddy here, Mitch Mulvihill. And it's going to be a little bit unstructured today, but we're going to go through our personal experiences with some bodily injuries that happen as you get older and, and all the things that need to be taken into consideration when deciding what to do with those. You know, because there's always more than one choice, even though it doesn't seem like that sometimes, and, and there's significant costs to whatever the hell you choose. And it's my belief that nobody knows your body better than yourself because you're living in it, obviously. But I do believe that, you know, your body, knowing your body takes a long time and to pay attention to it. And, you know, Mitch has been working with me at the GNC for years now. He's been a personal trainer for years now. Been an athlete pretty much since forever. And so all those experiences make you pretty in tuned with your body. And then I'll go over... My experience, so his is herniated discs, and mine is, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, a disorder called rhabdomyolysis, but it's it, it, both are equally dangerous and, and have costly decisions depending on what you want to do with it. And then we'll uh, get into r some random conversations, uh, because I've known this guy for a little while, and it, although this isn't related to business directly, it's still something I believe that's a significant adaptation that you got to learn to deal with when you're older. And there's a lot of information out there. And, and sometimes I feel like you're forced into uh, thinking that there's only one decision. And I just think that there's not. Unfortunately, there's just risks with all of them. And so what's up, man? How you doing? I'm feeling good. Happy to be here. That's what's up, dude. Love the spot. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh... Dude, let's start it off, and uh, you started off as an athlete. What sports you play? Played hockey, baseball, lacrosse. And then, and then recently we got into spike ball pretty aggressively. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that. And you're my go-to partner, by the way, so. I feel yeah. uh, pretty good for being fucking 33 and being able to rock like that. Oh, yeah. Um, Making those diving plays. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, for sure. All right, dude. So herniated discs. Um, what happened and, and, and how did you figure out that you had herniated discs? And I suppose start off with what the fuck are they? So discs are donut-like objects that are in between your spinal column. Okay. And they separate your vertebra. Yep. So they provide cushion. Uh, between the nerves and yep. it keeps you from feeling what I felt, which is sciatic pain, for an example. Which is nerve where, pain, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. That's where you get the numbing feeling down your legs and it radiates throughout the day. Okay. And so how did it happen or when did you find out that it was fucked up and you obviously have to deal with it because... Dude, whether you play sports, whether you work out, like, you might beat up your body, but you know that you're not injured. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this was by far the most intense injury I've dealt with outside of breaking my hand and my nose. You know, that's about it. Um, but I received the injury. The nose healed nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a way. <laughs> um, all right, Takes up space. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> So but, how did you find out that you had herniated discs? So I play in a men's league once yep. a week still. Got to stay active, in my opinion, with sports. I mean, there's or just... Whatever or you whatever. Do, you got to stay active. Yeah, with sports, uh, hobbies, you know, arts and crafts, whatever you got to do, you know. Yeah. It's good for the mental. It's good for the physical. Um, so I'm playing hockey. Yep. And... I received the injury by getting into an altercation with uh, an opponent on the other team. We scored a goal, and, you know, he didn't agree with the type of offense I was playing. So he swung at me. I restrained him. And then while I was restraining him, uh, I rotated my torso, and my core wasn't engaged. And they popped. Two of them popped. One of them bulged. And uh, it made for a difficult time in my life. So at that particular moment, did you know what happened? Like, did you know, like, yo, 
I just herniated some discs. No, no. I was in denial for a while. So how did you get to the point of being like, shit, I have herniated discs? Well, essentially what happens is you try to do everything outside of that because when you look at research about your back, right? So all of a sudden you have this issue and, you know, you wake up a couple nights in a row and you're like, okay, this thing isn't just going away. Yeah. Um, You realize it's a possibility and what they have to say about it online is very discouraging yeah because a lot of it is geared towards forever like limitations and they allude to that type of like life potentially sure right rolling forward but like did you just search because you had back pain and then you're like hey like i'm gonna try to find some similar symptoms online right um but at that point, you're still kind of guessing. Yes. And then the, the thing that never went away was, was pain, right? Right. And so, like, what type of pain? So, I started working an office job. Because I've never had, and, like, a bad back injury. Right. So, I started working an office job, and over the two years, you know, I lost strength in my core from sitting yeah. all the time. And that's you know, leads up to why it happened in the first place. Sure. A lot of it is just lacking in that area yeah. as far as strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, basically the process then after you receive the injury is you have to get a referral from your doctor. So the first step is you have to go to your family uh, clinic. or whatever. Yeah. So like everybody has their network yeah. that they can go to. Yeah. And mine was right off by Greenhaven. Yeah. Popped in there. You get your appointment. They do, five. A, they do x-rays or anything? No. No x-rays. So they just it's did basically, an examination and then they send you to the specialist. Yeah, it's like a five, ten minute conversation. You get your prescription and then you go to the pharmacy and you go get your pills. Got it. Which are pain relievers, right? Yeah, so you or get muscle relaxers. Yep. So or you whatever. get the you get the painkillers and then you get the muscle relaxers. Well, so what's next though, right? And then sometimes even the steroid. Oh, the prednisone or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So. Which I had major issues with. Why? It just affected my mood. Got it. In a way where it was like, yeah, this isn't sustainable. Yeah. Okay. So. And so they're just like, hey, you got to get the inflammation down. And then that's basically the game plan. Yeah. And then in the meantime, you're referred to a specialist that does how do you get the diagnosis of a herniated disc right so you then get the referral to get imaging done so then you have to get your mri sure okay and then once you get the mri you can then bring it to a physical therapist orthopedics office and they can look at it and work with you that way based off the specifics of what they see so you got so. yours done Yep, so I got the imaging done, and at first I went to a chiropractor for okay. a couple weeks. Yeah. And... Is, do, what, is it fair to say you have a tendency to try to go, like, the natural route? Yeah, like, yeah. I would prefer that. Yeah, all right, so the chiropractor. And it, you know, worked for a little bit, right? Like, I was learning about it, I asked a lot of questions, and I just needed more yep. from for this because I cannot accept being, no results being, being right immobile. like all of a sudden I feel like I'm 80 years old and it's like okay yeah this isn't gonna last <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I, yeah I, yeah because you're losing mobility is what you're losing which right is the ability to do all the shit you like to do mm-hmm. um and so who would you see next so, yeah, I, I spent a couple of weeks there, and then I moved on to a referral that I had before from my mom. Yeah. She worked with this place uh, called PDR, and it was unreal. The amount of things I learned from these people, it was life-changing, really. And just having the ability to translate that information into my the rest of my life, and yeah. then also just sharing it with others, it's, it's a game-changer for me. Well, so what was this place, though? Because it doesn't sound like you're going back to, like, a surgeon or anything. Was surgery even on the table? So we'll get there. All right. We'll get there. Um, but PDR, though, 
just wanted to like shout out to them for a sec and their process because they did exactly what I was looking for because the psychological part of it is so important sure. and they address that as well as they have these advanced machines that squeeze you into position perfect like you are structurally braced and you're rotating this machine really yeah like i was doing rotations and low back extensions but everything was like pelvic tilt perfect right and just shoulders like it, it felt good and i leveled up quick because i was committed right and then they give you your stretches that you have to do at home y yep yeah. yep and then your uh, cardio as well yeah is also advised at this point yes um all right and so how many you know how long was this after that you you found out you had the injury that you found him maybe a month yeah so i found out that i had the herniated discs fairly quick like after the injury it was like a couple weeks yeah because it wasn't going away and it was getting bad yeah like right away yeah <laughs> so um all right so what is the process look like then when you were when you found them and then you're doing the at-home exercises or yoga in the back of the gnc like whatever it was right yeah you know? i mean seriously. it was all day right <laughs> yeah like you have to be on top of it and so what's the time commitment with that Man, it's it's like every day, honestly. How long? Like, as far as just like just like basically the requirement to do what you did because so oh, it's physical I get what you mean. therapy, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's at home maybe, and in the in the place that you went. Um. But but do you think that's achievable for everybody? I guess. Because you devoted a lot of time to that. Yes. Um, I believe that everybody has a chance to make their physical position make improvements no matter where they're at. Yeah. It's just you have to want it enough. Yeah. And for me, there just wasn't an option. It's like I must get myself into a stronger position. And from there, it's just – what do I have to do? And then you just learn from other people and go through the process, right? And I, I'd say the most interesting conversation I had was with the the DO at the uh, orthopedics office. What's the DO? The, uh, the, the doctor that would do either the surgery or the injection. Okay. So he's the one looking at the imaging. Yeah. Telling you what's going on specifically. Yeah. What he recommends and why. And that conversation, it uh, changed the way I look at anybody else being in that position and or how the health care system works in a way. Because it's as if I was being sold surgery. Like I could feel it. Really? Yeah. So he was basically sat you down and had a consult on this imaging right yep and he's pretty much the authoritative figure that most people would probably assume that he knew a lot on the subject and, and probably knew better than them oh yeah i mean this guy is super intelligent right but you can tell when certain language is being used that i felt like i needed to get surgery and that I, he also said that I wouldn't be able to do the activities I wanted to do. And so you're in this fear state, right? When you leave the building, it's just not, not a good vibe, not a good vibe at all. No, You know, I remember just walking out of there thinking this guy is basically saying my life's over and I need surgery. Like what? <laughs> That's not a. What that's not some, a what, option. What were some of the limitations that he was saying? Right, like like in your injury, what? Because dude, well, these, it's like, these limitations must be common for other people, right? They must see this shit and be like, dude, this guy is probably gonna be screwed, like the rest of them. Well, it's just like, dude, I snowboard. Yeah. I weight train. Yeah. Play hockey, you know, and he's just like, no. 
Oh. He's like, you're not pressing weight up over your head, you know, shoulder presses. Yeah. I mean, sure, you can get creative and find other ways to work your shoulders. But, I mean, th- that's just examples of things I was told. And and so snow, snowboarding and spike ball wouldn't have been on there either then. Oh, I mean, it's just I, – I, I think it has to do with, like, the parameters they have to work around. Sure. Because then they're not how many liable. People, and how many people do you think that they really see that might be in – you know, a certain physical state or that basically does those things that you're, t- they're, you're talking about like every day. Cause dude, there's a lot of people with sedentary jobs that hurt their back because of weakness and things like that too. They might not have been able to do those things to begin with. So it's kind of like, is it an overgeneralized conversation? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, that is a good question. Um, one of the main issues for, putting stress on your body is obesity, right? Sure. So like when you're overweight, um, your body is just pulling a lot of of extra gravity around throughout the day. And that type of stress is going to cause issues on your back for sure. Yeah. Knees for sure. Yep. I mean, it, it just goes down the list. So in my situation, I wasn't overweight, which helps. A lot. A lot, for sure. Um, I do think, I mean, I bounced back within six months. Yeah. Pretty pretty significantly. Like, I was back jumping, catching footballs. I could play hockey again. So, all right. So, you're sitting there leaving this place, and you're like, wow, that's depressing as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So, what did you do? Because, you know, basically, you probably were able to then – go ahead and continue with surgery if you wanted to go down that route. Oh, yeah. It was on the table. Yeah. And so what happened, because that's not the route you chose. No. Because as soon as you start reading about... Surgery? Yeah. A discotomy, the replacement of your disc, you find out that the success, the success rate is just not high enough. Like, there's just... People are not bouncing back at a success rate that is appealing to me yeah right it's like okay let's do this with pdr strengthening and i'm gonna do the nerve block just block the sciatica nerve like cut it off so then i can really dial in to this program because when you're receiving a pain response constantly it makes it tough yeah and and so i get it when people say like i can't do it you know yeah because it does hurt that bad yeah like it does suck so this dude was the same guy that actually did the injection of the nerve block though, right? Yes. So you just basically said no thanks on the surgery. Let's try right. the nerve block. Right. And then at the same time, you had already found this other place and were kind of like, hey, I'm going to give this a shot. Or did you have to go find that other place with the only other option is surgery? So you do the nerve block and then you're also doing your physical therapy program. Got it. And then also waking up, going to the gym every morning, yep. doing the stretches, doing the cardio. Like, it's just, it's a must. Yep. Right? You have to get your day started in that way or else it can be a slippery slope, right? When you don't get those endorphins rolling and yeah. um, keeping it the body loose. It makes it a little easier that some of those days you go straight to the gym for work too, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's also why those things are really important to you too, right? You know, there might be some people that really don't mind not catching the football anymore. Um, but that's like what what what's more important to you? Like how much time and how much work are you willing to spend? Because the body is definitely an amazing thing and it will heal itself. Um, yeah. And, and that's not to discount all the great medicine we have and everything else. But some of those type of injuries, you hear very different stories very different stories between everyone. Yeah. So how the hell are you going to tell one person? Like, Well, this is what I hate to see. Um, a guy came into the store like a year ago. Yeah. And we got to talking. Yeah. Um, he was telling me about his injury, and I think it was, a, it was a knee issue. Common. Right. Something with the ACL. And um, he was expressing how he experienced a similar conversation with his surgeon. But what he did was he took it literally where – hey, you cannot do this and that. And we were talking about skiing, skiing, because I brought up the snowboarding, and he hasn't skied a day since. 
but you could see it in his face like he would love to do that yeah and it's just it's too bad right yeah because he took that conversation with the the certain yeah yeah you know the the governing body that's gonna you know lead you one way or the other has that authority they have a certain ability to lead you in a certain direction right right um and the thing is is the longer you don't try to do those things the less likely you're ever going to be able to do them because if you're literally saying okay i accept that aren't you just slowly getting out of shape more because you just kind of eliminated all the physical activities and i just think that you know I'm sure that there are back injuries that are absolutely necessary to have fused vertebrae and everything else. What was the surgery supposed to do for you? It was supposed to put, re- replace my discs essentially. Oh, so fake discs. Yeah. And then fake cushion and yeah. hopefully it doesn't deteriorate, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wild, dude. Yeah, and then you add the prescriptions on top of that, right? Cause it's not that you were taking it's not those, that hard cause, cause to just to, keep right? doing it. Yeah. It got to a point where I was just like, I'm done Yeah. because you know, all of a sudden you need that a couple times a day. Yeah. It gets, it's the because slippery, you slippery want that pain to go away. Yeah. And you know, the <laughs> and solution. it's just not the long term route. No, no, it's really quick and easy at the time. Though. Yes, it is. Um, so money and insurance. Uh, you were 25 at the time, right? Yeah. I, so that was kind of fortunate. Yeah. It was a blessing just because I was under my parents' insurance at the time and, um, my mom works for children's hospital. So, so she had a great insurance. Yeah. Policy. So it worked out. Right. That's good. So I, and I that referral care. was from your mom. Same, same deal. right? Yep. Yep. To the physical therapy therapy place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you didn't have to incur any of those costs, basically. I think there was maybe a couple smaller bills, like co-pays and whatnot, yeah. that, you, that you pay. But other than that, yeah. it was pretty... Pretty easy. Yeah. So six months went by. You're doing all that. It's been, what, three years now? Yes. So I probably forgot more often than I remember that you actually even had a back injury because dude, we're still doing whatever, right? Yep. So what's the status now? Oh, stronger, faster, (laughs) more flexible. Really? Yeah. yeah. I gotta work on flexibility. (laughs) That's my weak point for sure. Yoga is huge for me. Especially now, right? Yeah. Like once or twice a week. If you're, when I'm doing yoga, I like heat yoga. Yeah. Um, So do I. It's too bad that, you know, everything's closed right now. I do miss it. Yeah. You kind of need, I'm not pumping the heat in my house for heat yoga. No, no, no. That's not happening. (laughs) No. Um, But but that's a game changer, though, for the flexibility. Did you ever do shit like that beforehand or no? I did. I did, but I really dialed it in as part of, like, that's going to be a part of my weekly routine now. No exceptions. Just because of the difference it makes. Yeah. And just that the way you flow your spine, it's called flossing. Really? Like when... When you're, you're moving, up, you're oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you'll never see me doing that. <laughs> you'll never see me uh, doing that dance, though. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's just things like that. When you implement them and take it seriously and commit, people will find that that mo- creates momentum. Yeah, momentum, and then you just keep building on that, and then you just want more for yourself. Yeah, and. I mean, it's just crazy when I look at these numbers, right? It's like a hundred billion dollars a year is what it costs Americans due to low back pain. For real? Yeah. Yeah. After, you know, you have to consider uh, lost wages and decreased in productivity to get to that number. But it's a big deal, right? Yeah. And then also, it is the single leading cause for disability claims and you know people staying on disability is because of the conditions of their their backs yeah that's pretty wild and i do think that the back is kind of a mystery it's the central part of kind of everything besides your brain is you know your brain's your mind but 
the next interconnected thing is your spine and pain is really hard to gauge from a third party perspective. Like I can tell you I'm, I'm in pain and I can like describe it to you, but ultimately like you can't fucking know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And right. so, so, you know, it's, it's a really different situation when you can or can't work. It, it's really hard to distinguish and to, you can't really discriminate against that because it's different for everybody, which really makes the remedies and therapies really hard to recommend because I'm sure there are people that need those prescription pills, right? It's just that bad and they don't have another solution or they're not willing to do the work that you did to rehabilitate and things like that. So yeah, it gets to be a fairly complicated conversation, but when you first got injured, when you were looking for information and solutions, you know, when you go into the to the family practice and you go that route, do you think that it's represented as one of the only solutions? So you get passed around and you speak with a lot of different people. Yeah. Knowledgeable people. For sure. And if you ask them the right questions and pick their brains and take it seriously, like they'll feed you some nuggets and it's good to pick up on that stuff. Simply... Um, the the piriformis yeah it externally rotates your hip but it's like right above the glute yeah that muscle gets super tight just from sitting right and implementing like rolling a lacrosse ball in that area was a huge difference maker for me and i would just have to do that throughout my day to just ease the pain a little bit keep the hamstrings loose loosen up the hips the it's hip a, flexors. The I mean, it's just nerve that you're talking about, right, right, right. Yeah, but at this point, you know, I'm mitigating the pain and just I'm, you know, early in my program, so yeah. I'm just trying to figure it out. At and this I don't point. even have a specific injury, dude. But that's one of the things that I get the most relief from because I sit all day now. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and with that constricted L shape, it gets tight. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it just what other fucking motion do you do on a regular basis? Well, and this was what they recommended. So since I have a desk job, they said, you know, kneel down on one knee and work. Oh, because then and then yeah, stand, that's a good stand idea. up, sit, you know, sit on a circular surface. So if you're constantly changing up your situation, it's forcing you, you, your body to yeah. adapt and strengthen. And then you can also posture check yourself sure. because, you know, you want to have your ergonomics, your physical ergonomics, like to a T when you're working. You know, and ergonomics is basically the, uh, the, you're weighing out the risks mm -hmm. when you're working as far as like movements go. Okay. So just being structurally and timely efficient, um, to do the job properly. And that even goes for a desk job. Like you don't, you, you don't want to be hunched over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my or you lean in like. You know, for or reach, super far re back, or, you know, you, you want to be upright, sitting in the car and hunched over with your shoulders. Yeah, like posture is important. Yeah, and and you stay in those positions for a lot longer than you think. I mean, I know it's obvious you stay in those positions a long time, but to reverse them, you were talking about the stretch a couple of times a day. It's actually kind of hard to be disciplined enough to do that shit a couple times a day. I will say it's like, yeah. it's a change. Like you have to really want to do it. Um, yeah. I mean, I was, I was obsessed about it though. Yeah. I know you were, <laughs> I know you were, I saw you on the cameras fucking doing yoga. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like, wait, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the alternative. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's it, just... It's, you only get so many choices. There just happens to be more than one. <laughs> yeah, and like in those instances, the reason I'm doing that is because you get a little response. You're like, oh, okay, I'm a little tight right now. Yeah. And it's like, got to act on it. Yeah, and especially if you're starting to realize that you're making progress and you're like, hey, dude, I got a shot now, right? Yeah. Where before you were kind of pigeonholed mentally and, and, and discouraged, which... What is the saying? If you can believe, believe it, achieve it, right? Like yeah. you like gotta believe that you're not destined to be not doing those things, because until you're paralyzed, I mean, I don't know. I've never had a back injury, but I damn sure I'm gonna see about doing the things I want to do. Yeah. And so, 
You're back to normal, man. That's what's up. And uh, it couldn't happen at a better time either, actually, just given the fact that you were still uh, young enough to be on the parents' insurance. So, and I don't have an injury that is similar to that. Unfortunately, mine seems to be something that I had to deal with forever, maybe, even though it's less common. Yeah, now. what happened with you? So, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but it's rhabdomyolysis or, or I can spell it in my brain right now, but rhabdomyolysis, that's basically what it is. And, and it's a disorder that is from basically injuring your muscles to the point where they break down muscle proteins. And it's not that common, especially just, in, in like weight training and shit like that. But the first time that it happened to me really bad, I had like transitioned into an office job and was not doing, I was just wasn't in as good of shape. And it, I was working a lot of hours and most likely dehydrated, right? It, it, and I don't do everything right. I'm a fairly healthy guy, but like I do chew. Well, what do you do all day when you chew? You spit, right? So you're like naturally prone to dehydration. And so you like got to be aware of that. Well, I used to work out super aggressively all the time. I just, that's the way I did it. Right. It's fun that way though. I like it. Right. <laughs> you you know, just got to give her hell. Yeah. Right. And it's like, that's what I'm there to do. And like, that's, Let it buck. yeah. And, and the, the problem is, is when you start to have more days in between your workouts, you, you aren't used to your body's not used to breaking down and recovering as fast. And you're also not stretching and, and just being physically active. And I don't know how cardio plays a role in some of that process, but I'm sure it does. It transports nutrients throughout your body, through your bloodstream, right? And that like boosts recovery and everything else. So it was, dude, it was at, it was at uh, Lifetime Coon Rapids. Okay. I was living in Coon What Rapids. was the workout? Shoulders, bro. Okay. Favorite. <laughs> but I was just going super hard and, you know, doing high volume. And when you're, when, when you are still working out and you've been doing it for years, dude, you're still strong, right? Like your, your tendons and stuff might not be as adequately able to handle yeah, the weight load. Memory. Yeah. You have the muscle memory, right? And, and as soon as the pre-workout hits and the, and the, and the pump starts, yeah. it's, it's music's blasting. Yes. It's exactly. time to put in work. Yes. So after that, I go home, drink a bunch of water, whatever. While I'm sleeping, I fucking wake up and it, it, the pain is undescribable. It, it, when you move your muscles, it feels like someone is ripping them apart. You know, when you see like the skin removed from a human on a computer screen or those museums and shit, yeah. you can see the little muscle striations everywhere, right? Well, if I moved them, I felt like I could feel every single muscle striation that was in the three shoulder muscles, just like tearing apart. And, you know, when you lay down, and I actually have prone shoulders like that. Like I have pretty bad posture, to be honest. And so when I would lay down on my back, that's how I normally sleep. Even just like having my arms straight, that little motion would create massive amounts of pain. So uh, whatever, I drank a lot of water. I had to piss in the middle of the night. Yeah. The problem was, is my piss was so dark, rusty red and it's been brown on occasion, right? Like you, yeah. like you've seen like not good looking urine, but this was a different, different deal, dude. Yeah, like it you looked, see it and you're like, dude, this isn't normal. No, and I'm and I'm also experiencing the like pain, right? And so yeah. I can't I can't even like describe it with you. But in order to get out of bed, I looked like a hunchback, bro, because I had to like like walk like this because as soon as I went like that, it just felt like they were tearing. And it was more my front delt, right? Like I beat those up way worse than the rest of it. It's Of course you do. That's the number one yeah. delt muscle you work, right? And so I was like, damn, dude, this sucks. And I made it through the night. I fucking just like slept kind of sitting up, like legitimately sitting up. 
and I drank a bunch of water as fast as I could, but like the pain was so bad that I just didn't even fucking want to do anything but lay there. And so the next morning, it's still pretty bad. And, you know, I've had where I thought like lactic acid built up in my legs. Like my legs have gotten like severely sore before, like just so sore. So you've had it before in minor cases? I, I didn't realize it till later, but yes, I had it in minor cases. And that's okay. what I was saying. Like I've seen my urine like a little bit different color, but dude, I didn't really notice it. And it went away like that. Pee was clear again. No big deal. This time though, it basically looked like blood, dude. And so it, that, that muscle breakdown is, is muscle proteins going into your bloodstream and, and hemoglobin, which is basically blood. So I don't know, but I would have to assume that the reason why it's really bad is because there's no liver to bear the brunt of the toxins. Normally, when you do things to your body, like drink alcohol or consume drugs or fucking eat shitty foods like fast food, all of it goes through your liver first, and then it goes through your kidney. And so your liver is much larger and can handle things. Your, your, your kidneys aren't meant to handle that stuff. So it's already inside of your body. So it definitely doesn't do, it's not filtered by your liver. It just goes straight to your kidneys. And so when you're peeing all that out, that's technically creatinine or, or that's the levels that you check. And so what happened is it didn't get better this time. And this was the only time I even was concerned at all. No big deal before, right? And so I had cryotherapy sessions for some reason. Like we, I just bought them and I had them. So I'm like, damn, my fucking muscles are so I'm going to go get cryo. The problem was, dude, is I couldn't get inside the machine because it's relatively tight, right? But yeah. dude, I had to put the gown on and I had to reach behind me. Bro, I was like wet. I was like trying to like literally position my arm on like the door handle so I could like force it behind me. Dude. It was a bad idea. It's a bad idea. And so that sucked. And I fucking left and oh, I'm like, no. and I'm like, dude, what am I, what am I doing, man? And like, dude, you, I have to drive, right? Like I have to move my, yeah. Yeah. So I'm You're like trying to hold, or what? I'm trying to hold it down here. Right. And I'm like going like this. So I don't have to, so I don't have to move my shoulders, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fucking pathetic. Oh my God. But I had to like go to work no. and do some other stuff. And so the pain subsides after like 24 hours, longest 24 hours ever. It was 24 hours. And that was that. Pretty much, dude. As soon okay. as it starts to, as soon as it starts to go away, as far as the muscle pain, it goes away, and it, my urine also cleared up. But this time, I could not. I could not. I just was falling asleep. Dude. I was really fatigued, and I didn't really want to eat. And whenever I ate, I kind of was like, "Man, I feel nauseous." And so I went into the doctor and was like, "Hey, man, here's the deal. Don't know what's wrong with me." And they couldn't figure it out. They thought I looked normal. And they were like, we're going to check your liver and kidney, even though like last time you were in here, they looked fine. And, and I had them checked. I had a lot of my whole body checked as soon as I, you know, well, one, had health insurance. And two, I uh, got stopped doing all the shit I was doing before. I was like, hey, maybe we should get some blood work done yeah. after that train wreck. Right. Fortunately, it was, it was good, man. I had good blood work. And, and I was able to bounce back as a healthy dude. Well, I think two days went by. They called me. I was on my way to a bachelor party. Going to be leaving for the weekend, right? They called me and they're like, hey, you need to go to the emergency room. And I'm like, what? Like, uh, what yeah, do you man. mean, bro? Like, all, all I see is bills, bills, bills. Like, just bills. And I'm like... Yeah. All right. You already know that. That's and, gonna be a part of the process. And I've never been there, bro. I've never been in the hospital. I don't want to fucking go, right? Like I just don't want to go. I don't like them. I know that they're necessary. I'm super glad they're there. I'm I'm really thankful for that. But it's just not somewhere I wanted to go, right? Yeah. I mean, you just know what goes along with it. Yeah. And so they're like, you're on the verge of kidney failure because I was like demanding an answer. I was like not just gonna show up there. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that means, but that sounds legitimate. So I'll go ahead and go. Yeah. Uh, Happy you did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> right. And so I get there and they're not telling me much. Right. And 
I'm not sure if you know much about this rhabdomyolysis, but it's weird and I've never heard of it. So for the viewers, I'll give you the full story. And so I got there and they just had a recommendation from my other doctor, right? They checked me in. Nothing's going on. They immediately hooked me up to fluids, though. They started asking me a bunch of questions. All They have pretty much had all the answers because I've already told everybody this. And I told them, I, dude, I worked out aggressively. Like, I know it's from working out. Like, it has to be something. And they kept asking me, like, dude, do you take protein powder? And do you take this and that? And I'm like, yeah. But, dude, at the time, like, even though I owned the store, like, dude, I just, like, wasn't really even taking that much of that, right? Like, I was working back in the office job and just, like, just eating good, whatever. Right. And I, that's something I still do. I still bring my meals and, and, and still eat good during most of the days. And a lot of the reason is it just saves time. Like, I don't have to go anywhere and it's all planned out. So if you were to, like, put one thing on why it happened, why do you think the rhabdomyolysis uh, occurred in your body? That's a great question. Um I have to think that unfortunately, after all said and done, and I'll, and, and I'll get into why this is the case, I think I'm just genetically predisposed to getting it. I really think that's it. There's only about 200,000 cases a year. It, it normally only happens in triathletes or uh, CrossFit athletes that are doing major, major endurance, usually outside in 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 not controlled temperatures, right? And, and dehydration is part of the reason it can happen. And so for most instances, do they have the treatment readily available? And the treatment is literally just being hooked up to IV fluids. And so that's what they did at the hospital. And it, then that, that was it, right? They were just like okay. basically telling me, stay here, blah, blah, blah. And the whole time, dude, like, like I, I hate to say it, like I was kind of like digging myself out of a hole. I was already in like shit loads of debt, six ways from Sunday from like school and just everything else. Yeah. And so, you know, I hadn't really been, I've never had any medical expenses, dude. I've never been prescribed to anything. Like I just, besides like the common cold back in the day when you're young, like I just fucking didn't need to go and do any of that. So... I threatened to leave because they weren't telling me anything that was going on and they were kept asking me redundant questions. Like, like what did I eat? What did I so your intuition led you to just be like, I'm out of here. No, my intuition like, led what, me to... What were you thinking about my, while you were there? My, my intuition led me to be like, I think they're going to give me a better answer if I threaten to leave. Okay. And... and I could tell that like something was wrong with me where they were concerned to tell me what was wrong with me. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, dude, I don't care if they tell me I'm dying. Like I fucking want to know the answer. Right. Like, like let's keep it real. Yeah. And right I, now. and I get there's situations that can cause a panic, but like, dude, the stuff I've been through, like I just was like cool with whatever the answer was. I was just cool with it. Right. Like I wasn't going to be happy about, dying or some shit but i like wanted to know because that's just how, the quicker you know what's going on the easier it is to accept whatever the current situation is right and so they told me you know your 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 toxicity levels which are creatinine levels are twenty thousand, and the normal range is 15 to 200 and i'm like cool like i don't know what the hell that means and they're like well that's really high and it means you probably have rhabdomyolysis, which is just a disorder of, and they didn't actually tell me the name until later, but they were like, we tested your kidney function too. And your kidney cleans the creatinine. So your kidneys need to do a shitload of work to get it back down to that normal range. They're like, the problem is, is your kidneys are testing at only 25% functionality. And they're like, that's pretty fucking low. And yeah, I'd say so. then they were like, so here's the deal is if they lose enough functionality, they die and they don't come back. And that is, That's... that is at the first point where I'm like, all right, I get it. Cool. Yeah, that's like the reality the check. The reality check, right? And then I just asked one of them because, you know, you if you conversate with them, they're they're 
they have rules to follow, but they're also people. Mm -hmm. So they'll talk to you in so many words. Yeah, right. And, you know, I was just like, hey, man, like, what does this cost, man? Like, I have brand new insurance. I haven't had insurance in like six years. Right. It all depends on your plan. And he basically said, he's like, dude, like, we don't know the answer as, right. as, as people here. And he's like, we can't even tell you till like days after you leave here. Like we just don't have the ability and I'm like, cool, whatever. Like I'm fucked. I'm here. Like I'm not leaving. Yeah. And, uh, then actually later I did get a little foolish and stubborn and, 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 and had a little FOMO basically fear, <laughs> fear of missing out. Yeah. If you don't know what FOMO is because dude, all my boys were up North having a bachelor party. Right. And That's so right. 24 hours later, the kidney doc comes in, they got me hooked up to fluids, they told me the game plan, and they monitor you for like cardiac arrest and other weird shit that can happen when you dilute your body with electrolytes and, and these fluids. And so, but that's literally it. It just, they hook you up to fluids and, and it dilutes your body. And, and then your kidneys can work a lot easier and my mind would bounce back and, and the toxicity level is going down. Looking back at it, I left a little bit too early. I was trending in the right direction. I was young. I didn't have any kidney pain. I honestly didn't have most of the symptoms that they even were telling me I had as far as physical feelings. So you would have stuck around longer if, you know, going back? Yes, yes. And and I think it's because what I realized about insurance and everything else, I'd already racked up so <laughs> many bills at that point that my i was already paying like the maximum i was going to pay that year so whether i stayed there another day or whatever did they give you a percentage of like what your kidneys were operating at they were all the like way back. once you they left were all the way back to 65 60 nice yeah. and that was within 24, 24 hours 24 hours yeah and so well that's pretty I just that's was awesome like, i was just like yo like yeah, if I can don't drink alcohol, you know, I mean, like, what am I going right. to do? I'm going to go to a bachelor party and hang out with my friends at a lake at a cabin and drink a bunch of water. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's what I did. Me and Iverson freaking rolled up there a day later yep, and, yep. and we chilled and I was kind of tired a little bit, you know, but I, I just went and got the lab work done. I think three weeks later, it was all back to normal. So looking back at it, I was like, oh crap, dude, I've had it like multiple times. Definitely multiple times. And then the shitty part was, is I had a problem controlling it happening again after that. And so now rolling forward, like what type of things have you implemented? Because it's almost like these things happen for a reason. Yeah. Right. I don't want to say the cliche, but you know, when I look back at it, it's almost like I needed it a little bit. Like I'm, you're not invincible. I'm not invincible. Yeah, I know. And I need to continue to learn. Yep. And it's just like, all right, check yourself. But before you wreck you know, yourself, right? That's right. <laughs> no, but like I I have implemented stuff because as you as you just trial and error it, right? Because I was like, I don't want that to ever happen again. I still want to work out though. I still want to be yeah. active. And I actually still want to lift weights. And, and, and heavy weights, and I want to do it the way I want to do it. Well, that has limitations as you get older. And I don't like, like you asked me, what's the number one cause on why this happened? I like literally don't have the answer. And nobody else seems to either. Um, it's like a multitude of things here. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, ultimately, I just feel like there's something wrong with my muscles. Like, why are they breaking down like that? Why are you releasing hemoglobin into the bloodstream? Like, why is it happening? Because since then, dude, I've had really mild cases. I, I, I've only had one other one where I went to the hospital, and I'll, I'll give the rundown on that. But other than that, it's been super mild. And, and I came in tune with my body where when I experience a certain pain while I'm working out, like I can feel it if it's, I don't know, one set, two set, three set, four sets into the exercises, like whatever. Yep. I can begin to feel it like and starting uh, or something like the pain. I know it seems contrary to fucking getting gains, but, and I have lost all my gains since quarantine, but I fucking run outside now. And so cardio Carl now. Yeah, no shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
you can begin to feel it. But basically, dude, is is by the time you feel it, it's basically a little bit too late. You you pretty much have it. A wow. Bit. So you should just get out immediately. Yeah. Out pretty, of the gym. Pretty like. much. And and anybody that works out consistently has higher levels of, of creatinine in their body. It registers as a protein molecule. So you probably eat more protein. You break down your muscle repeatedly and you repair it. No big deal. It's normal as fuck. Your kidneys can handle a shitload. Because I thought 20,000 was crazy on the levels, right? Okay. But this last time that I went in, my levels were 50,000. And it was way less of a big deal. Like the pain, the amount of time it took me to recover. And like, keep in mind. That just doesn't even seem to make sense, right? You'd think. Well, the problem is. The higher the number, the worse the pain, the worse the situation, right? Yes. Except for I did not go get tested until so long later, my first time that I experienced that really bad one. Because I didn't know what, I didn't know what was going on. I never even knew this was a thing that even happened to people. And so. By the time I got to the doc and said, hey, what's wrong with me? He's like, test me up. It was already about seven or eight days later. This next time, it was 48 hours. And what I did in that 48 hours was different than what I did previously because I knew that IV solutions were the solution. I mean, like, it, it provides a buffer. Well, what I also learned is you're not really supposed to buy those and use those in that manner for yourself. And there's no other place that you can go besides a hospital or an emergency room or a specific urgent clinic with a recommendation, which is bullshit because you can't get there fast enough, right? Like this is an urgent thing. Yeah. So you have all these hoops to jump and it's one of those things you need like right now. Yeah. And so I, but you can you can you can buy all this shit, right? It's no big deal. You can buy it. It's just kind of odd. Yeah, like where'd you where'd you go? I just bought it online. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, you know, I'm sure. I'm really actually not quite sure why you know a personnel at a little league game in the summertime in Alabama doesn't have a fucking IV bag to use too, right? It's a pretty decent thing to have in an emergency situation for so many different things: heat stroke, whatever. Vikings camp, like, you know, all they, you know, they have IV bags there. Yeah. So is the shelf life on them pretty good? No, like it's, that it's might not, be why it's still months, dude. It's oh, it still is. Months. It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. but long story short, dude, I, I like was still kind of stubborn and, and didn't want to, didn't want to go back into the hospital stuff to deal with this all the time. Because at this point it was happening to be about once a quarter and one day in the hospital last time was like $10,900. And so, you know, I started to do a little bit of recon. Whoa. And I, and I looked at the test and the cost of the test and things. And, and I didn't have an insurance policy that covered a lot of this stuff until you got to a pretty high amount. Mm-hmm. And my whole life, I never really went to the doctor. So it's like I was going to pay the max amount. Like it, it was nice to have insurance. It was an oh shit policy. You know, yeah. like I, if I had yeah, those the casualty highest. plans, but, and I did have an oh shit moment, but the problem was I was going to have a bunch of future oh shit moments with this going on. And I'm like thinking about it and I'm like, dude, I can't incur these costs like on an annual basis. Like I, I got to figure out a way to figure this out and that's by not making it happen. And then if for some reason why it does happen and this isn't recommended to anybody and this is arguably stupid, but whatever, I'm just saying it's my choice. And, and I, this is how I chose to do it. So, you know, you have those at your house ready to go because what happens is, is especially if it happens to your legs, the pain's so bad that dude, it sucks. And, and, and the better results you can get are, are treating it early. Right? So what happens is when you go to sleep and, and your body sits still, it becomes stiff and that's when the muscles freeze up and the excruciating pain happens to get him back going. I've never once had it happen where I worked out in the morning and by like noon or 5 p.m. or 8 p.m. I was like in severe pain. Never once, dude. But every time when you go to bed or you then sit, it hits. It, you, yep, it hits. And then when you wake up in the middle of the night, dude, it's really hard. Talk to about great timing. I know. And <laughs> so it's really hard to move around, dude. And... You know, so I'm sorry, but even to just get to the hospital and do all that stuff takes time. So I just wanted some emergencies, right? Yeah. And so 
Uh, so you're taking. It's just, it's just uh, you found a different option. Yes, I found a temporary that will, solution in an emergency. Is basically what right. I found. You're thinking ahead of time. Yes. In case something happens, it's the uh, the emergency plan. Yes, and which and and it's really the emergency plan because after the research, I can't. You it can't be permanently treated by yourself because. You really should not, or I am not willing to do this. You really shouldn't put too many bags in you because you can screw up your electrolyte balance. Like at once or throughout your lifetime? Or what do you think? In, in too short of a span. You got it. Yeah, because if you dilute it, right, there's sodium in it, and, and sodium bicarbonate is in saline solution or whatever bag because there's a lot of different types of bags. Yeah, I bet. Um, but – that can really fuck up your internal equilibrium and like you can have seizures and stuff. Okay. But once again, one of those nice nurses, uh, pretty much like by the questions I was asking, I, she knew what I was about to probably could do was to prepare just in case. And she pretty much said, Hey, be careful. You should probably not put over this many bags in you. Because then you started to get in the risk zone. And I read that online too. I mean, you got to search for a while, but you can find legitimate stuff. Well, I did that. And, it, and then I went to a place in Edina that has, uh, you know, IV solutions. And there's beauty solutions. And there's vitamin solutions. And there's the hangover cure solutions. And yep. they're like expensive, dude. They're for rich people, basically. But yeah, they, they sell them out in Vegas too. Yeah. And so, you, but you have to be a licensed somebody to actually administer that stuff. And that's why it's so hard to get all these things and things like that because they can be misused and cause a lot of problems. But I'm kind of like weighing the financial cost because, again, I like have so many that I created for myself before that, you know, when you look at it, let's say you make a hundred grand a year, if you're paying, you know, five to $10,000 a year just on your health stuff. It's like, dang, dude, like that's that's kind of hard to make up for. You know what I mean? It's a big it's a big percentage of your income and it's just a big deal. And so what I realized when I was going there was I was really just getting a really similar treatment. And and the one thing that I found out was you can go get lab results independently for literally one tenth of the cost. And those lab results will give you good indications on whether or not your body's functioning because they do the same thing there. Not to mention the turnaround times, like literally just finding other options. Yeah. And dude, yeah. it's the most convenient thing in the world. You walk in there, you get tested and you have your results like a day later. It's right. a faster turnaround time than the alternatives. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to read them though. And so I figured all that out. And like I said, it's an oh shit plan. Well, this time my kidney started to hurt a little bit, even though I got the test and they said it was functioning fine. The reason why I'm saying trialing and error is because I fucking bought the test, but it didn't include the one thing I needed, which was the total creatinine count. Okay. And I found that test later for like an extra $9 and 99 cents and it, they just do it all at once. But I, I screwed it up and <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I'm feeling pain in my kidneys. I don't, let's go check this out because unfortunately what can happen is you can be put on dialysis. Ooh. And what that means is, is your kidneys are dead and your blood still needs to get cleaned. Otherwise, you end up with some thing that I don't know the name of it. But like you die from just having too much toxins in your blood. And, and it's probably a really shitty way to die. Yeah, it's not where you want to be. No. So that's a life-changing thing though, right? You go into dialysis at a place for four hours, three times a week. Now you're really talking about like you don't have any option. That is your life. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying this is not like advisable by any means, but but you get aware of your body really quickly. You know yes. you know I know it's gonna happen now before I go to bed, before I'm dehydrated, before my urine's a color, before anything is anything. You can literally prevent it from from attacking your liver, I'm sorry, your kidneys. And then if it's not a mild one, you got to go figure it out. And, and our great healthcare system will do that for you. And, and because it's a fucking emergency. Yeah. And so I went there and they're looking at me like I'm insane. Like, well, dude, where did you even get these lab results? And I'm like, I got them for 40 bucks. 
in one city over. And like, yeah, what was the place called? You go to walkinlabs.com, and they have independent laboratories. One's Quest Labs, and one's... Okay. Um, can't remember the other name. Hey, other options. Yeah. And, I dude, they're, they're just legitimate places that are just sitting there. And when I walk up, dude, there's... There's people everywhere. Everybody uses them. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't know about them before. Yeah. And so you can get anything checked, dude. You can get your blood sugar checked, your testosterone levels checked, your your just anything you want. Yeah, it's a sweet deal. Yeah, and especially if you don't have insurance, they're reasonably cost alternatives, and and they're arguably the same people everybody else uses, right? So, uh. Honestly, that's a great place to, like, find out where you're really at, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, getting blood work done. Yes. And checking hormones. I agree. I mean, it's... And it's probably the, recommended that you do it while you're younger so you have a baseline because those things are, again, super individualized, right? The normal range of tests is 250 to... 250 or 350 to 800. But that's, that's like, not an accurate representation because if you're a dude that started off at 500 and you now are at 400, you're basically normal, right? You just got older. But if you're a dude that was at 800 and now you're at like 300 or 350, whatever the low end is. Well, you're going to feel way different. You're going to feel way different. And, and so that's where not having a baseline is a problem because you don't really want to do anything to your body if your body's used to functioning on a lower spectrum than average because it's all relative to what you're used to feeling. And then if it's low, like as a young adult or whatever, like sure, then then figure it out because if you're feeling symptoms of, of low T, for instance, right? Like there are replacement therapies and stuff like that. But that's a permanent deal, right? Like that's another decision that you're gonna have to accept, right? If you, if you choose to go on that hormone re- replacement therapy, you're gonna be on it forever. And if you want to have kids and stuff like that, you might have to get off it for a little bit and and stuff like that. But if it improves your quality of life, you legitimately benefit from it. It's just like, and, and so sometimes that can be probably prescribed maybe too early in one's life because you don't have a baseline, but none, none of those tests were ever recommended to me until I had a problem. You know what I mean? I kind of went in and and got tested when I, when I got, uh, my life together and again, they kind of looked at me like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, I didn't have any insurance. I was just like, charge me the money. Yeah. Oh, it's $500. Oh, sweet. Fuck. Right. Well, it turns out it's a lot cheaper than that. You just don't walk into the doctor to do it. You just have to know what tests you want conducted and find them independently. It's crazy how these things happen, though. And then you get brought to a crossroads in your life. And then it opens up your mind to, like, for instance, what you're just explaining. Like you went and found answers, yeah. Based off your current situation, yeah. And there and are just, a lot more like, answers out there than people think, and and you know there are some medications that people need, and they're expensive, and you can actually find those in a lot of other places, and they are legitimate. They may not come from here, and unfortunately, I do think that's against the law to order those. Uh. But oddly enough, most of the raw ingredients for pharmaceuticals, which we consume the most as America, and we're only about like 5% of the world population, literally, we consume the most prescription pills in the entire world combined, probably times 10, and and we only have 5% of the world's population. So that in itself seems a little odd. I mean, wouldn't you think uh, there's a little capitalism behind that? Yeah, I mean, I do, for sure. And, and but But here's the deal. I do feel like it might not be the fault of the consumer, but dude, a lot of people sure as hell want a quick fix, you know? And so you're asking Definitely. for that stuff. It's also advertised on our television, things like that. Other countries don't have that allowed. Like it's just not really, you can't do it. So it's kind of odd that a consumer knows the brand name of a prescription before they walk into the doctor and request it. But you know, that's the way our healthcare system is built. And somehow it still yielded the best healthcare system in the world. When you talk about top quality care, we just have some financial problems associated with that, right? Like it's just definitely we have, we have some we have some weight that our country a carrying. high percentage of bankruptcies are due to medical medical yes yes and it's yes it's alarming 
Like it's it's it's, it's alarming and it's unfortunate. It's like what's going on here? It's unfortunate too because um, it's necessary, and I don't even want to even think about what. All this stuff. I mean, dude, our hospitals are probably full of people dealing with COVID, and there's bills associated with that, and I don't know anything about it. But, like, all previously to this, dude, we had a bunch of economic stressors because of, you know, the overall cost of care. Yeah. And the reason why I call it economic stressors is just because we're also providing to care to a bunch of people that, um, you know, can't afford it. And that's why our country is awesome in many respects, but there's still something a little out of whack, right? Because the government actually can't afford to do that either. And nor can the average individual in my opinion. And as a male, I don't fucking need to do any like maintenance checks for real. Not really. You monitor your hormones, you you know, whatever females have a lot more stuff that they need to annually get and whatnot. But no, I'm with you on that. But like the, incentivization to have surgeries you know just the vibe that you got the vibe that we're seeing which is basically when electoral procedures get taken out of the equation keep in mind electoral procedures are not really electoral like some of them are really really necessary they're just not covid and they make hospitals money and now you can see that our system is dependent on on revenue because they're letting nurses go and everything else and so you know, it's 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 a very interesting scenario because for me, I look at my long term finances and my retirement and all the things that I have going on. And for me, I just am like, I need to know enough to make the decision that I want to make, because if you start paying these costs at 33 and, and you start paying those your whole life, dude, that's just a lot of money. And, Definitely. and, and I, and I'm, and I make good money, so I have to pay good money and, and it's, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's and, right. and, and that's fine. Like it's fine, but, but it's such a motivator to make sure that I'm you do doing every, the right thing yes, that works yes, for me, like 100%. that I'm willing to live with hundred percent. And, and it, you know, that there's risks to that, you know what I mean? Uh, especially in my case where if you get it bad enough, which is really rare, to be honest, it's already a rare thing to get rhabdo, but it's even more rare to actually just straight up die from it. But if you just left it untreated, especially if you're a hardcore athlete out, out in the sun doing a trial, like you can just die. You just fucking die. Really? Yeah. So, you know, needless to say, it's something to be concerned about. And that's why. That's why you're dialed in to what you have to do to make sure it doesn't happen. Exactly. And that's why you can't have enough, you know, too much pride. I probably have pride around this or whatever, but you got to go in when you got to go. You have to take your self care very seriously. Yeah. Like it is a, it is a primary need for everybody. Yes. And you just, it's, it's, it's a requirement, honestly. Like if you want to, put yourself out there as the best possible person you can be and then help others taking care of yourself is just, there's a reason gotta, why you they gotta s- do it. You gotta do it, dude. And there's, like, there's a reason no way around why it. they say health is wealth, because if you stay healthy, you know, you're not spending money on medical expenses. Big win. You might be Huge able to, win. you can't really out earn those. Like if you have bad medicals and you have to pay for all of them and don't get me wrong, there's so many different programs that help so many different people and I don't know the answer to all of them, but you, there's a lot of great stuff out there. But you can get into an easy trap if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, right. right? You can start having... You have to be around people that enforce positivity that you're going in the right direction. You have the vision that, hey, I want to be here, and yeah. other people around you want that for you too. And luckily I had... Um, that throughout my recovery yeah uh, my girlfriend at the time had the same injury really yeah it was wild yeah it was it was wild she got it before i did and then i got it and you know it was a couple of 80 year olds you know in a 20 year old body right and it's just like i got not a good situation but no it's not but you have people that want the best for each other you know your family and then you just 
vibe off that and yes. keep momentum going. Yeah, and you can have for conversations the best. about it because you know ultimately it's it's your decision what you want to do. Right? Don't get me wrong, like it's it sucks, right? Like going through it. Yeah. There's gonna be times where you know you're an asshole and you're pissed about yeah. the pain or whatever it may be of complaints, but it's just having people that you know you can go to to get you through it. Yeah. But you got to stay on that your purpose. You, you have that vision, you know where you want to be, and you're going to do everything to like put yourself in the best case scenario. Yeah, and then mine, dude, back to what you asked me, like what did I do? I basically had to check my ego forever because I can't walk in the gym and just start lifting weights. I have to make sure I actually am like in tune yeah. with what I'm doing. And dude, like, so, so it, you had an it, ego it, death. Yeah, it weakens your muscles though, man. When, like after you get injured like that, with that muscle body part, dude, it's weak for a while. Like it bounces back, but like, dude, you can't like pick up heavy weight the next day. You can't pick up heavy weight like two days later. Like the small movements. Yeah, and you really enjoy that. Yeah, and but you can tell like it's just a shit sandwich, dude. Like because if you're trying to just continuously you know, improve your health, be in shape, which is basically my deal now. I used to be more about aesthetics or whatever, but now it's just I'd enjoy it, right? Yeah. So it was it was it happened at the right point in my life where I was like not like, damn dude, I'm gonna like Now you're thinking longevity. Yeah, exactly. So Which should be on everybody's mind to some degree. Yeah. You yeah. know, like how how can I live the longest, most prosperous life? Yes. And accomplish the things I want to do because what's on my checklist is a lot of physical things, right? Like I want to go surfing yep. in a lot of different areas of the world, snowboarding and um, just all these things, right? And, and dude, you have to be in good shape. You have to be yep. pain-free to a certain degree. And, and dude, it affects your everyday enjoyment if you're not. And, and so, you know, being able to prolong that. Also, dude, it makes you more productive at your job. Yeah, it, it, it just helps everything. And so it's the one thing that is a lot of in your control, even though there's a lot of easy temptations to fall into that make it really easy to not see the, the digression and then and then having to revert that. We've seen so many people at the GNC, dude, like or even your personal training clients where they make some progress, right? But more ideally, at a young age, you want to you want to stay, you want to stay in that line of progress, mm -hmm. and and it's possible. It for surely is, and it's possible to come back no matter no matter what. I mean, maybe not no matter what, but everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, and, and it's just I th this guy came into GNC and he knows my brother from yeah. LA and he's paralyzed. Um, you know, he's in a wheelchair and doing everything on his own, right? But just most upbeat attitude. Yeah. Crushing it, right? Like this guy was a good vibe to be around and hitting the gym still, doing everything he can. And it's just when he left, I felt so motivated by that because he has taken his situation and representing himself in a way that impacted me. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's just like... It makes you grateful, and especially, right. it's like, hey, like, no matter what, dude, the negative attitude is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, so, many, so much yeah. respect for that, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll see where that leads, and, um, and, and I did figure out, and I learned a lot by actually going to the hospital in that experience, and just what it costs, how it works, because, dude, I didn't even know anything. And it's actually a really intimidating process because, dude, some of the bills that I had to pay, like, dude, they were, like, lost. Like, there was just so many of them. Wow. Because they're all broken down into, like, subcategories of this and that. And so it was all very confusing. And then... It, does that pop up on, like, your uh, collections or, like, on your credit report or, it does like, lost you, bills? It, no, no, no. It, it does if you don't take care of it. But Got it. I was the first time logging into, like, a medical website portal, dude. Like, my, like How was that functionality? I don't know. Good as expected, I guess. But okay. Before, dude, it was just I was always on my parents' insurance. I never had to deal with it. Yeah. And I basically just never really had any issues. And so 
you start to figure all that out. And hopefully going forward, because right now it's, it's, it's pretty easy, dude. I don't, I don't do a whole lot. I just maintain. I sometimes do bands in my office. I go on runs. I do the foam roller. I, I stretch, but really, I mean, it's, it's pretty lax right now. And, and from time to time, you'll still strength train. Like yeah. if the gyms were open, yes. like, you know, I, oh, I, you I, will, still. I fully intend on going back. Oh, for sure. As soon as they open up, yeah. I'm going to have to chill. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep the level, the fucking volume of my earphones uh, at a certain level. Cause, yeah. Cause it sucks, dude. Like, and I, dude, it's just part of getting older. Like I know every time it happens, like I just feel way more incapable of processing that toxicity. Like I can just fucking feel it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm not sure how much you know about rhabdo, but that's basically the gist of it. And it's a sneak attack because you can have it a bunch of times. And if you're young and healthy, dude, I blew right through that shit. I just thought it was sore as fuck because I squatted my life away the day before. Yeah. You know, like you're supposed to feel like that, right? Like you were just nonchalant. Like this is, it was just a hard workout, like initially. Well, yeah. And and dude, like like the pain was so bad. The pain was so bad where I was like, this is not normal. But I was talking about the first times where like you didn't even know, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And, and what I'm saying is you got to pay attention because pain isn't always gain, right? Like, yes, you should be sore, blah, blah, blah. But dude, after you get into a certain level of shape and you don't deviate from that routine, you don't get sore. Like the first time you hit legs, like it doesn't happen. And that is, that's where, that's where my, that's why I got to get to again, because when you stay in that routine and you stay in that shape, that stuff sh- doesn't happen to me. It doesn't. It, 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 my body works like normal. But as soon as I deviate from that and, and something isn't paid attention to, like water or, or, you know, how frequently I've been exercising and all that, it can cause a serious problem. And so it's something I'm going to have to continue to pay attention to and, and I'll figure it out and hopefully it's figured out to the point where it doesn't happen and, and alters my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Cause currently right now I'm in the same boat as you dude. I get to do everything I want. It's awesome. I love it. Right. But pretty much what I've came to realize is if you get rabdo, you're more susceptible to get it again. Most likely depending on the scenario, if you get a back injury or an ankle injury, yeah. or you're more susceptible to getting round two is a lot easier. Yeah, to come by. So, so you gotta you gotta be on your p's and q's. That's right. You, you gotta be dialed in with your regiment. Yeah. And there's just no excuses. Yeah. For me. No. No. Because it, you know, if it happens again, you know it. It's something that I'm gonna know how to deal with. Yes. But also. You know, you just don't want to deal with it no. in the first place. So no. that's Especially why. When you're that's why you go to work and make money and do all the other shit. You got yeah. kids or whatever the case may be. Like you have momentum going for you. Yeah. Once this hits your it hits the, your reality, it stops. Yeah, but in a way, it does. But you got to do what you got to do. But and, to get it back going, yeah. you cannot sit in this mindset that you're a victim. And feeling bad for yourself. And yours probably and requires more actual conscious effort in, in, in doing all the physical things. Yeah, I mean, it was do. a six-month uh, ordeal. It's more so educating yourself and getting educated by professionals and then literally just being self-aware of your body not to push it too far. Which, dude, I'm sorry, is really difficult because when you go in the gym and your guys are there and you're all working out, like... It's tough because I literally just have to like sometimes be like, dude, no, like it's not the day. Yeah. Like, and, and dude, it's like, but that's okay. It's, it's like three sets in and it's like, dude, what do you mean? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, well, I'm sorry, dude. I can't sit here and explain rhabdomyolysis to you. So I'm yeah. fucking done for the day. Right. <laughs> you know, so that's good though. Yeah. Um, to a certain degree, like it's good to push. Right. But you know, what's best for you. Well, I just have to be self-aware enough so I can find that find that fine line where I can still apply enough effort to get satisfaction out of it because that is satisfying to me to push myself without getting myself into trouble. So it's really just ego check, right? right? And like paying attention. Sometimes not working out with headphones actually helps that out a lot because you get in the zone a little bit when you're listening to music. Okay. Um, at least I do. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Without without question. Yeah. I'll be blaring the metal music. So throwing the weights up. Um, 
So listen, dude. Random question because I never have actually asked you. Which was weird when you bought your first house because like, I do lending, mortgages, right? But like, being on the other side of it as the employer, I had to do your verification of employment, and I was like, "What the fuck is this thing?" And now I understand why it's so complicated for us to request those. Totally another conversation, but I don't know how old you were. Pretty damn young, but you had a significant amount of money, dude. So, how long were you saving? To get to that amount of money. For like my down payment? Yeah. So. What was it, 22 you bought it? Something like that? 20. What was it, 2015? That's five years ago. 23. 23. 23. All right. Yeah, so, man, I was mowing lawns at like 11 years old, right? I mean, I don't know that, but all right, yeah. And it just was like a part of the deal. My parents taught us how to save money and the importance of using it as a tool. Yeah. And so I was putting money away for a long time, a long time, probably. And what would that be? That would be 12 years. So, so you basically, your parents were like, Hey, we're fucking savers around here. All right. Basically <laughs> it's like, you're going to get a savings account and that money is going to go in there. And, and then, you're going to watch it grow, and then you're going to turn it into something else later on. Instead of, you know, buying Pokemon cards and video games. Yeah, dude. Um, whatever. So, right? At the time, just because that's what you can do. You mow lawns, and then you want to do whatever at the time. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm going to put it away. So, uh, that's, yeah. And, and, like, you know... I won't get into the details, but it was a significant amount of money to put down on your first house at that age. Especially, like, just because I knew, like, you weren't making, like, crazy money, right? Like, that doesn't happen until you're older, right? right? And, I mean, some people are doing awesome shit at that age and making boatloads of money. But, like, you're not making what you're making at that age. So, I was surprised about it. But... Well, and I'm just super conscious about that part of my life too. Yeah. So, so is that really just because your parents like instilled that, or well, like what's the deal with it? Because, dude, I don't really see that a lot. And Kobe randomly told me a story about Mexico, and of course, he just is like Mitch the weird ass, right? Because <laughs> he's he's the opposite character a little bit, right? Like uh, you only live once or whatever. But I think you like spent all your money. And, like, you guys weren't going home for a little bit. You got drunk, spent all your money or whatever. Yeah. And you guys were, like, eating, and you were like, nah, I could just, like, make it till I get home. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in fucking Mexico. Oh, man, I don't specifically remember that, but it sounds like something I would do. Just like, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I maybe you were leaving the next day or some shit, but, like, I just remember. Yeah, like, I'll be fine. That. So I don't, need to, I don't need to spend money right now. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> or something, I don't know. But, like, is that basically it? Like, you were just like, hey, I'm just going to save as much money as I can and just, like, stuck to it and never changed? Well, I just knew that at some point I was going to need it for something um, that you advised me to do, right? Buy that first house and... Fill it uh, with buddies, uh, man! And it's, uh, you know, you helped me out a ton with that. So dude, I've always it, been grateful for the advice that you've uh, provided me. I appreciate it, dude. And, and, and it, dude, it was cool because it, my experience was, like, really sweet, too. Because I was living with people that, like, were my friends and it was sweet. Oh, yeah. It wasn't I mean, like we great. were living with fucking Craigslist and people we didn't know. Like, it was just on a win-win. No, win. Yeah, it's cool. Like, Yeah, so for those on, of you that don't On their know, end, yeah, it yeah. works out. Yeah, it, it, it's awesome. It's the house hacking. You know, you buy a house, you fill it with a couple of roommates, and 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 it's a good time uh, as long as you pick the right people, and it allows you to uh, really lower your expenses and and keep that savings account mm -hmm. replenished if that's what you want to do. If you want to have extra fun, it provides for that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so the last thing that uh, I want to ask you is is personal training 
Did you get into that right out of right out of high school? Because your brother's in it too. Like, how did y'all end up there? So, my first job was at Fitness Nineteen. Oh yeah, right out of high school. Got it. Um, I remember that. <laughs> I met you there. Yeah. 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 So Were you at the front desk or something. Right. It yeah. was just like an entry level job. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to play lacrosse that year. I just didn't want to deal with it. I'd rather work and make money, and, and instead of dealing with like the politics and whatever that sure. went along with it. Uh, so my girlfriend at the time got me a job at the gym. I just basically cleaned the equipment and even worked in the kids room, which Whoa. was uh, oh, right, right. It's pretty big for Mitch guys. You know, get a little kickball going on, some Uno, but it, it, it was fun. I remember that. I, club. I, yeah, I learned I learned a lot by dealing with that. And uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, and uh, basically, I met Colby. Yeah, and Nick. Yep. And I saw how those guys lived their lives with their clients and how they were helping people out, and just the vibe around the job. Yeah, it and, definitely seems like you you uh, do you enjoy it. It flows. Right, right. Yeah. So that's basically how it happened. Yeah. Because from there, you get into sales and you sell memberships. You yeah. know, I didn't do the cleaning and kids room for that long. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I can do something else. And then, then you just turn into a personal training yep. uh, from there. Yeah. And then, you know, since then, and then, you know, we won't get into too much detail and then we'll wrap it up with a fucking embarrassing story of my life last night. <laughs> but uh, you get into insurance and now you're kind of multitasking a couple different things. And I actually think that's kind of a, a nice luxury to be able to do because it makes you a little diversified if you have a short attention span it actually you know makes it kind of nice mm -hmm. um and so you've been rocking that for a little while what would you say yeah i'll just throw it out there you you also have another job on top of it right so you got three basically right oh, wait one, yeah i have three okay <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I like staying busy it's right. it's stimulating right. for me that that and, short attention span and so I mean, what's up with that, dude? Do you just like like it or or you know, do you find it difficult to manage those three jobs or is it just three things that you kind of find enjoyable and it fucking works itself out? Yeah, it's enjoyable, it works itself out. You just have to be on top of timing, right? Yeah, juggling the Yeah, you yeah. have to um designate time block yeah. for everything, but once you get rolling with it, everything things yeah. just fall things fall into place yeah. and it works out perfectly yeah that's what's up man so basically I've, I've i've been messing around with bitcoin right okay and this is just a dumbass story and don't do this and this is a thing that happens in the world but dude i was online last night i was uh on youtube for some reason and i saw a live video and hopefully most people don't make it to the end of this because we're going long and hopefully don't even fucking hear this but <laughs> <laughs> but like I knew it was fake. I knew it was a fucking scam, dude. But I just couldn't help it. Oh, I just fucking no. had to do it. No. And so it's a fucking... Let's hear it. It's a video of uh, Al Wozniak. I believe that's the name, Al Wozniak, which is the co-founder of Apple way back in the day. It's got some Bitcoin giveaway nonsense on there. Oh, no. Comments are turned off. Fucking dead giveaway. Oh, gosh. So basically the deal is... Uh, Al Wozniak is giving away Bitcoin, or 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 technically it represented the the Bitcoin exchange was giving it away. So you could send up point one up to twenty Bitcoins, and and then it would be wired back to you, right? Okay. But it would be wired back to you in the twice the quantities. That's how the giveaway worked. You wire you wire point one, and then you get point two. Sounds like free money. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm sitting there, I'm fucking tired. I'm just like, my Bitcoin's appreciated lately, meaning it's worth more, right? So I'm like, fucking, I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I send point one. Well, what I didn't really realize, dude, is point one's like almost a thousand dollars. Bitcoin's 10 grand right now. It's, it's not the end of the world either way, but long story short, send it over. And of course, nothing came back. <laughs> nothing came back, bro. And so 
I already like knew, you know, but I just had to see. And then I typed in point one, and I just like wasn't doing the math in my head. I was like, oh, that's not bad. Well, I bought oh. the Bitcoin at a less price, so I just fucking had it confused. Yeah, I'm just a dumbass. And I just really wanted to know. I wanted to know. And if you paid attention to the subtleties, you don't have to actually try it to know that it was a fucking scam. And I'd be willing to bet that. Is that even retain? Like you can't. I can't ever get retain back. that back. No, never. like you sent it and if, she gone. She gone. Bye, Felicia. She gone. That's, so it was like nine hundred seventy nine dollars. As soon as I sent it, it's so oh. check this out. So check this out. As soon as I sent it, I see a different video by a different channel. Which keep in mind, both these channels have almost three hundred thousand subscribers, but the comments are turned off. I fucking know it's bogus, but what what really did it to me right after I press the send button? Was there's another video live streaming at the same time with Robert Kiyosaki's <laughs> picture on it, which is like another dude. Do you know him? Very yes. Yep. Yeah. So it's the fucking same thing going on on a different channel. Oh, no. And so I'm like, all right, well, dude. you know what? At least I know what's up. At least, like, whatever. I just accepted it. It's fine. I went and bought the exact same amount of Bitcoin on the exchange right afterwards again. I'm like, whatever. Fuck you. I'm just going to buy more. But... You're like, I'm doubling those, down those, to make up for this right I, now. Well, I, you know, I just believe in the overall long-term storage yeah. of Bitcoin. But, uh, it, like I said, it appreciated it. It's not a big deal. But basically, the lesson in that is trust your instincts. You don't need to know for certain. There was no risk in me just fucking keeping the Bitcoin that I had originally had. And that was a dumb mistake. <laughs> and, and, and it could have easily been a lot larger. So if you're doing anything in that type of market, uh, what I want to say is don't let that deter you because that's just like part of life and, and it happens. And so there's going to be scammers on cryptocurrency, right? There's scam- Yeah, essentially there's- that guy got a thousand bucks. Yeah. And like there just was, there was, sent over. There were 70,000 people watching it, dude. For free? For free. For free. For free. Peace. <laughs> so like... Boom, done, uh, canceled. It's tough. But but what I'm saying is is like, it is what it is, and uh, it was fucking stupid, and I pissed at myself. But it wasn't going to make or break me, and uh, I still am just I still can't let it go though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate. Hey, that. thanks for and, having uh, me. I, I'm glad you're doing well because that was that was a long time and. Uh, as I'm happy to hear you are too, and we'll be getting some spike ball here soon. Dude, I'm excited the, uh, for it, bro. I'm excited for it, but whatever. We'll find a place to play. We'll find a place. Oh yeah, I mean we yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man, I appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you telling the story, and uh, it made it more entertaining to to tell mine because yours was. I felt like a lot more commonplace for it to happen in the recovery process. And if anybody has rhabdomyolysis, don't play around with it. Like you got to know what it is so you can identify it. And then I pretty much laid out your options. None of them are that great. So thank you. Have a great night. Peace. Hey, fuck that. Never wind it back, 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 back.